All right, so we have seen that the way we view the universe is changing. The way we view ourselves is going to change as well right? uh, through new uh, discoveries in medicine in chemistry. Right? Uh, it, it's a little hard to explain, but in the early days of science, going back to the ancient Greeks, there wasn't a lot of what we would recognize as science. They didn't really perform experiments. They just kind of observed with their naked eye, then thought about what they observed, and came up with what they thought were logical solutions. That's why the scientific revolution is revolutionary. They're like, okay, once you have those ideas, now you have to test it. You've got to find proofs to back it up, right? So, for, uh, for instance, we, we, we had medicine all, all wrong. Right, uh, and so there would be men like Andreas Veselius that's going to come along. The gentleman you see on the screen there is going to help change that. Uh, you know, in the early days of modern medicine, it was still deemed as inappropriate to dissect a human. Uh, the only bodies that med schools could get their hands on were executed criminals. There's just only so many of those to go around. As creepy as that sounds, uh, so some doctors uh, and med students would actually hire grave robbers. To dig up, dig up fresh specimens, if you will, and to to dissect them, but, but that was very illegal and get a lot of trouble for that. Uh, actually, be executed yourself uh, for grave robbing, and then then be dissected by medical students. Ironically enough, uh, so that's where Andreas Veselius's book on the fabric of the human body comes into play, uh, because it was so highly detailed. What you're seeing in that picture is Andreas Veselius, and he's holding an arm. Now you've noticed uh, the arm is missing the skin, and he's pulling the tendons down. Right? Uh, and you look at the drawings in his book on the fabric of the human body. Right? They're highly detailed drawings of the muscular system, of the skeletal system. I love this picture, by the way. Uh, and each piece is clearly labeled and marked. So if you can't get a hold of a human body, his book on the fabric of the human body is the next best thing here. You see the underside of your brain. Right? Uh, and, and the more we, I hate to say this, the more we dug into the human body, the more we were figuring out and the more we discovered that we actually had wrong, that we had incorrect. Here, here's, here's a great example with, with what William Harvey discovered. Before William Harvey, uh, the idea in medicine was that there are two types of blood in your body, one for the veins and one for the arteries, and that the beginning of the circulatory system was the liver. All of that is completely wrong, right? It's all wrong, right? Uh, the heart is the beginning of the circulatory system, and there's only one kind of blood in the body, and it makes a complete circuit through all your veins and all your arteries. That's why it's called a circulatory system. It makes a circuit through your body. Think about how basic that is, right? You learn about that in elementary school science class, and for centuries, we had it wrong. That is crazy. So William Harvey comes along, through observation of the human body, through a scientific process, like, hey guys, we're wrong, we need to rewrite the, the uh, med books on this. Right? Uh, and so we're really going back to basics here, figuring out how does the human body work, right? And, and, and or if this happens, right, what happens after that? How is this connected to this, right? Starting to apply logic, right? Hey, for instance, uh, when the bubonic plague swept across Europe, the idea of, oh, it was just bad air. Right? It was just bad air. So, so people would wear plague masks that would supposedly filter out the bad air. Well, that's bogus. That's not what it is at all, right? Uh, it, it, so we're, we're trying to figure out, right, what actually causes sickness? How can we actually heal it, right? Using logic and reason. Let's experiment, figure out what works and what doesn't. Look at Robert Boyle, right? He developed the universal law of gases. Now we're not going to delve into the details about the universal law of gases. You can save that for science class, but it's another universal law. Remember, Newton discovered the universal law of gravity and universal law of motion. Now here's the universal law of gases and another law that applies everywhere in the universe at all times, supporting the idea of the Newtonian machine universe. And what's really important about Robert Boyle is he discovered this using controlled 
experiments. He didn't just observe nature with his naked eye and sit around and think and go, you know, I think it I think it goes like this, so that must be true. No, he's like, okay, I think it's like this, so I'm going to conduct experiments to see if I'm right. And if I'm not right, I'll go back, think about it again, perform another experiment until I finally figure it out. And I'm going to carefully control these experiments so I will definitely be able to discover the truth. That is what we consider modern science. That's why this was so revolutionary. Then you've got a guy named Lavoisier, and he begins to organize the elements of the universe. Think about how, how neat that is. He, he's trying to organize the building blocks of creation itself in a logical, orderly, scientific way. Right? It's like the precursor to the periodic table. Right? And he's trying to organize creation in a scientific, logical way. This is the scientific revolution, applying order and logic to the universe because what we were discovering right through starting with copernicus and on to tycho and on to kepler all right and isaac newton the universe is logical right it is orderly right the language of the universe is math right which is logic and order itself and they're trying to figure out the language of the universe now using reason and logic